When you start doing chemistry, it doesn't take long before you have to use the concept of density. Density is a measurement of matter that shows how much mass is in a given volume of that substance. Every pure substance has its own unique density, which you can use to also identify those substances. Now you might already know that density equals mass over volume or D equals M over V. Um, I've already made a couple of videos about factors that affect density and the concept of density. But in this video, we're just doing some calculations. Specifically, we're gonna calculate for density, we're gonna calculate for mass, and then we're gonna do the trickiest one, calculating for volume. And if all goes according to plan, in a few minutes, you'll know how to do all three while minimizing common errors along the way. As you're doing your chemistry homework, you might run into a word problem something like this. Chemistry is full of word problems and we just have to deal with it. So the question is, find the density of an element if the sample has a mass of 34.22 grams and a volume of 14.68 milliliters. So when you're doing uh, problems like this, it's always good to take inventory of what you have. We have a mass, we have a volume, so we can go ahead and plug them in to our density equation. So D, we'll solve for that. I always tell my students, if you're using an equation, to write the blank equation. Just put it on your paper. It takes only a second, but it, it allows anyone reading your work to immediately know what you're doing. You're, you're using the density equation. So density equals the mass, 34.22, and then you substitute in of that sample. And then we substitute in the volume, 14.68 milliliters. So notice we have two different units, grams per milliliter, and those will end up being the unit for density. So um, when I do this calculation, take 34.22 divided by 14.68, my calculator gives me this number, 2.33106 two, six, seven. Okay. And I've seen a lot of students who will dutifully write that all down and just move on to the next question, but we have to do a little uh, process of elimination here. So here's the thing. That's a lot of digits. And yes, your calculator gave you those digits because it's just trained to give you all the digits that it possibly can. But we as scientists only want to report the ones that we know. And so this introduces the idea of significant digits. Okay. And the rule is when you're dividing and multiplying, if you have numbers, you got to count those digits that are in those numbers. So this number has four digits and this number, it has four digits. And the rule is if you're multiplying and dividing, your answer should only have as many digits as the shortest measurement that it came from, the one with the fewest digits. Since they both have four digits and we carry them through, I really only know the first four digits of my answer and I shouldn't report the remainder digits like that. So just kind of match what you got going on up here. Density equals two point. 331 is a best answer I possibly can. Those numbers out there are liars and we don't know them. And so we do have to have a unit and the unit for density here is grams per milliliter. You could also do grams per centimeter cubed. A milliliter and a centimeter cubed are the same. So you might see those swapped in for each other, um, but that's how we would do it. All right, and we have come to our first, pause the video moment of the video. Example number two, take a moment if you like and see if you can find the density of this sample. All right, and if you were able to pause the video and do that, and you got an answer of 7.49 grams per milliliter, then congratulations, you've successfully solved problem number one on this uh, video. Okay, so that's how we solve for density uh, using that equation. Now let's switch it up a little bit. A sample of tungsten, density 19.3. Incidentally, tungsten is one of the most dense elements on the periodic table. Um, it's not the most dense. The title belongs to osmium or iridium, depending on who you ask. And it has a density of 19.3 grams per milliliter. It has a volume of 14.2 milliliters. What is its mass in grams? Okay, so again, we look at it. We have the density. We have the volume. Now we need to find the mass. So we are going to use the same formula, D equals M over V. And I'm going to start it the same way as it always is and then work with it as I need to. So since I know the density, I'm going to plug that in 19.3 grams per milliliter. I don't know the mass, so I've got to leave that blank, but I know the volume is 14.2 milliliters. Always put units on your measurements when you plug them into your formula. Okay, common error 
uh, that happens in doing a problem like this with beginning students is to take the density and divide by the volume, which kind of makes sense at first because the volume's on the bottom. But in order to get the M by itself, which is what we need to do algebraically, we actually have to multiply both sides by 14.2. Okay, and what that does is it cancels the 14.2 on this side and brings it over to the other side so that the M is now off by itself. And that's what we really want. 14.2 times 19.3, that's milliliters. Okay, and what my calculator gives me for a mass is 274.06. We're going to consider that in just a second. Okay. Um, if I have three digits here times three digits here, and I'm carrying three digits through the other one, I really only know my answer to three digits. So even though my calculator gave me five digits, I'm only going to report three, 2.7 or 274, apologies. And then I have to put a unit on it. Now look at the units. Milliliters on this side canceled. So they don't exist anymore. Milliliters on this side, there's a milliliter here and then a milliliter on the bottom over here. So they cancel again on this side. The only unit remaining is grams. And that's how we get our answer in grams. So I got 274 grams. That's the best representation of the answer that I should give. All right. Now it is your turn. Second pause the video a moment. All right, and the second pause of the video moment is example four, calculating mass, just like we just did. A sample of titanium with a density of 4.51, it's much less dense than tungsten, has a volume of 25.6, what is its mass in grams? Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can solve this one. Okay, and if you were able to do that, and you got an answer of 115 grams, then congratulations, you're on a roll. And that is the mass of the strontium or the titanium that we have in our sample. So there you go. And the last and the trickiest one is right here. So you might see a problem like this. So try not to make these mistakes. So the density of lead is 11.4. What is grams per milliliter? What's the volume of 129.3 gram sample of lead? So you look at the question, you're taking inventory. I see I have a density and a mass. So I need to use the same formula. Again, just take a millisecond and write it down so everybody knows what you're doing. D equals M over V. And we're going to plug in our density. And we know the mass, 129.3 grams. We do not know the volume. So that's what we're solving for in this case. So I meet a lot of students who will make an error when doing this type of uh, math problem. A uh, common error would be to say, all right, well, we need to get V by itself, so let's take 11.4 divided by 129.3. Um, a lot of people do that. It's not quite correct, so here's how we're going to take care of it. We have to get the V by itself and also the V not on the bottom of a fraction. Okay, so we're going to do something similar to the previous example. We're going to take and multiply both sides by V so it's not on the bottom anymore. And what that does is it cancels the V on that side, and now we have V times the density equals the mass. So it's almost like V times the density equals mass. Okay. But then we need to get V by itself. And so what we need to do then is divide both sides by D. And that cancels the D on that side. So I'm just showing them the algebra with the formula. So what I want to do is actually take the V times 11.4 and divide by 11.4 grams per milliliter on that side, and then divide by 11.4 on this side. So I'm just going to rewrite that. V times 11.4 over 11.4 equals 129.3 divided by 11.4. Okay. So that is going to cancel regardless of what unit it has. And so the V is going to be the mass divided by the density. And when I get my calculator rolling, my answer that it gives me is 11.4. Three four two one zero oh, five two six. Okay, that's what my calculator gave me because you know it's not that smart, not as smart as you are. And I got to look at that and say I don't want all those digits. How many digits should I give? In my final calculation, I have four digits divided by three digits, so I really only want to keep the first three digits and chop it off. 
If this were higher than a five, I'd round it up. It's not, so I'm just gonna say volume equals 11.3, and that should be in milliliters because the grams are gonna cancel and not the milliliters. So there you go. Okay, now our final pause the video moment is coming right up. Example number six, calculating volume. The density of a strontium sample is 2.63 grams per milliliter. What is the volume of a 1.09 gram sample of strontium? Take a moment, pause the video, and solve this one. All right, and when I did this one myself, I got a volume using the same method as the previous example of 0 0.414448669. Again, my calculator is doing all kind of weird stuff. But since I only had three digits divided by three digits, I'm giving only three digits in my answer. Quick reminder in sig digs that the zero to the left doesn't count as being significant. It's just a placeholder. It's telling us the answer hasn't started yet. It's less than one or less than, uh, yeah, less than one. So zero, and then I start counting here, one, two, three digits, and that's my answer. So there you have it. Hopefully you followed along and hopefully this will help you in your density calculations and your chemistry travels. If you have a question, please send it to me in the comments or directly. In the meantime, happy studying and have a great day.